Hello everybody, my name is Spieler, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to export the track builder in BeamNG to Blender and then back into BeamNG as a model that you can use in maps. But it also is not limited just to maps because you can also use it for really anything you want. Say you want it as like a track in a game, you can do that as well. So it's very versatile as you can use the model for really anything. So without further ado, let's begin. So let's go to the free realm. Uh, you can go to any map you want. I'm just going to do grid small pure just for this tutorial because uh, it's kind of the easiest to load up and do everything with. All right, and now that we're in the map, we're going to go to the main menu and then go to Track Builder. And then once we press Track Builder, we're going to go to Start Track Builder here. And now we're going to open all these tabs up here. This is not a tutorial on how to use the Track Builder, by the way. This is just a tutorial on how to export it. So I'm not going to go in depth of how the Track Builder works. There are a fair bit of tutorials out there, and I may do one of my own in the future. So if that is out, it will be in the description below. As of right now, of recording this, there is no tutorial for that from me. But there are tutorials online you can find. Anyway, so I'm just going to open up these tabs because uh, I like having all these tabs open. Uh, the track setting seat tends to be the most important, so we're just going to rotate that to zero and then move that up a little bit. So I'm just going to build a very, very simple track right now, and I'll speed it up real quick. All right, so our mini little track is done, so I'm just going to save it real quick and call it test track and then we're going to save that as a test track because it's always very important to save your track that you do before you export it just in case you have any changes that you want to make afterwards so you can load it up and then make those changes and you load it load it up by going to search it in here and it will come up right here anyways so click anywhere on your track so this is sort of the start area so i'm just going to click there and then go to test and now you're in testing mode and uh, you can test the track if you want i'm not going to because uh i'm pretty sure it will work so we're going to open up the world editor by pressing f11 and now once we're in the world editor, I'm going to move some tabs around. And now that we're in the world editor, we're going to go to the, where is it? The select tool, it's right here. And this little toolbar is the stop driving for the track builder. Leave this here and don't press anything because uh, you need this up to get back to the track builder itself. So as you can see in the world error itself with the scene tree, it kind of shows you all the pieces right here. So the sort of the track builder is made out of these proc meshes and then they're sort of numbered. So what you're going to do is click on one of them and then click on the bottom most one and then it will select all of them. And now you can actually technically move it around. I don't recommend it because then it's kind of hard to edit afterwards. Obviously for this tutorial, I didn't, I did it to showcase, but I would not recommend doing that. Anyways, now that you have all of them selected, you're going to go do file and then press export selected it as Colada. And now this will bring up the file dialog. And what you're gonna do is go to levels and then whatever level you're on, which is small grid for me. And then you can export this anywhere in here because uh, obviously this model won't be used, but you'll see what I do with it in Blender because we're gonna re-export it as a separate model. So we're gonna go down to file name and we're just gonna name it placeholder. You can name whatever you want, but I'm, I just like placeholder because it is placeholder. And you're gonna press save. All right, quick little thing. I forgot to make a level folder for it. So you're going to want to make a level folder for the map itself before you do it, because if you export it, it won't go anywhere. So make sure you do that. So I'm just going to make small grid. And now I'm going to try exporting it again, because obviously my little blunder there wasn't really necessary. So small grid, and then we're going to try re-exporting it again. All right, save that. And if I go to the folder, it should be here now. And it's small grid right here. And then you have placeholder, the exported Collada file. So we're pretty much done with this section. We're going to head over to Blender and I will see you there. All right, so now we are in Blender. So this is a te export template I will provide as a download link in the description below if you want to use it, as you do kind of need these things if you want to use a collision mesh and LODs for the model itself. So we're going to go over to File right here. We're going to press Import and then Collada. And then you're going to want to go to the actual directory of it, so small grid, and then import your model here. All right, so it is imported now. So if you click on it and if, oh, by the way, if it doesn't show here, you can always click here, go to set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and then do set origin again, geometry to origin. And it should bring the model here because sometimes it's sort of off to the placement of where it was in the world. And I put it at zero, zero. So obviously it's going to show up in Blender and zero, zero, but for other models, it will be kind of far away. So just do that to fix that. All right, so next up, we're going to go down to this little grid button here. And we're going to go down to the normals and the geometry data. And we're just going to click the clear to remove the custom normals here but i'm just going to do the auto smooth because it kind of just auto smooths it to make sure it's not all flat like this and honestly at this point we're pretty much done other than adding a material to it so we're going to go to new material i'm just going to call it whatever you want i'm just going to call this placeholder because that is sort of where it is and i'm also going to call the track here placeholder and we're just going to drag and drop this into the start and we're also going to go to tab just to open up the edit mode in Blender, and then we're going to press A to select everything, go to UV, Smart UV Project, and then press OK. 
And then if you need the UV tab open here, go to UV editing and that should be there. And you can press A when you're in here and then you're just gonna scale it up. I'm gonna do about, I like to do around 25 normally. You can kind of do less, depends on the size of your track. You just gotta scale it to the correct distance or size that you want. All right, next up, we're pretty much ready to export. So I'm gonna do this, this, and this. I'm gonna ignore this because this is for lotting if you need it, but for this right now, it's not really necessary. I do have a tutorial on how to do lotting and stuff. If you wanna check that out, I will leave that in the description below and on a card annotation right now. Anyway, so we're gonna go to the file and then export, Glotta. Uh, make sure you have selection only because if you don't want the uh, billboard there, you're gonna to wanna to do that. Turn off that, we go to levels, small grid or whatever map it's in, and then we're just gonna replace that right there because uh, we do not need that. All right, now we're gonna close out of Blender and we're gonna go back to Beam and G. All right, there we go, BMG kind of acts up sometimes. All right, and uh, if the asset browser is not here, you're gonna go to window and then asset browser and it should show up. And if we go to this and we just press refresh directory, or maybe it's before this, it's before this, okay. So it's gonna show up to wherever you put it in there. Normally you put it in the art, but for this tutorial, I didn't do that. So it's in placeholder. But it kind of acts as any other model for 3D models, basically. It's just, it's, it's, it's basically its own 3D model, so yeah. All right, so we're gonna drag and drop this in here and it has no material. I wonder why. I know why that is actually, because technically it wasn't given a material. So what we're gonna do is go to material editor again and we're gonna go to new material and then we're gonna call this one placeholder because that's what we call the material for this in Blender, if you remember, this is called placeholder. And if we just give that a name and then we can just create there and we're gonna save that. And now hopefully when I bring it in, hopefully I don't restart the image. I do not, good. And now it is here. And if you, if say you have the track in a specific way in your map and you want to just bring it in and say you want it for like a water park you're making or whatever you're doing i'd recommend using the track you already placed to sort of give you a guide for where to put it as i have it right here let me try off the uh, grid snap and basically line up to your best of ability and now it is overlaying that so next up we're going to exit the world error and then we're going to press stop driving and then we're going to use the track transform here in the track settings and then we're just going to move it away uh, for now out of sight out of mind and we're gonna press test again just to get the car over there. And now we have a working space for the actual material we're gonna add. So if we go back to the world editor and we click on the track, and then we open up the material editor right here. Now we're gonna give it PBR because PBR is lovely. And now you can kind of just mess around. It kind of acts as your own sort of testing grounds for whatever you wanna do. Say you wanna make it metallic, you can do that now. So uh, it is metallic. And my favorite slider right here, the roughness, it's gonna make it all shiny. Oh, that, oh wow, that is, that is unbelievably shiny. I'll do a little less like around there. I think it's because I have a metallic on, so I take the metallic off. It's not, it's not gonna be metallic, but with metallic, it looks really cool. But yeah, I mean, that's about it. You can kind of mess around. So say you have a specific texture right here. So if I go to the sand now, it's going to be covered technically with sand. Or if you want it to be this sort of asphalty texture, you can also add that. That's with using the UV map that you did. If you didn't UV map it, it would only be like a plain color like this. But if you if you do UV map it, you can get um, some interesting textures like uh, I guess this asphalt <laughs> road texture. <laughs> also, don't forget to save when you're done with the material editor because uh, sometimes I forget to do that and I lose my progress on materials. All right, I mean, that's about it. I mean, all I can do now is I guess test out track and, uh, oh, actually I'm glad that that was not it because I forgot to make it a visible, a visible mesh. So if you go down to here, make go to from collision mesh to visible mesh final. Now you save that and now it will have collision. And now we can actually test out track. As you can see, it is working as intended. Maybe, my, maybe not my driving skills, but everything else is pretty good. Oh no, oh God, okay, well, I died. And obviously once you exit the map, uh, this will disappear because the tracker will be no longer a thing and you just have this left. So basically it's a way to save the track builder in maps. And I find this extremely useful for really anything. I make water slides with it. I make different tracks with it. You can make literally highways with it. It's a very powerful tool that I feel like a lot of people don't know this trick. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like down below and subscribing if you aren't already to stay up to date with the latest videos. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.